Hey guys, Richard here again, going to show you another deck profile. Today, we're going to be talking about budget decks. So, um, yes, the new Royal Paladin deck with Monarch Alfred is very expensive, as a lot of you have said in the comments of that deck profile. Um, so I decided to make like a quick little deck that should be relatively cheap for you guys to play if you want to play a Royal Paladin deck. Uh, this is more a deck for beginning players, so if you're new to Vanguard, uh, welcome, and I hope you enjoy this deck. So starter is Glyme. So yes, Glyme is from the trial deck, um, so you're going to be running it and it's your only starter for standard. Next up, we're going to be running four copies of Soul Saver Dragon. So Soul Saver Dragon is basically what the deck is going to be focused around. So the skill Soul Saver Dragon is when it attacks, when it's on the Vanguard Circle, uh, you may Soul Charge 1. And then uh, his other skills act, you Soul Blast 5, and 6 of your units gain 15k until the end of the turn. So the whole point of the deck is for this to be the finisher, and you also want to be able to do it multiple times, so you have a lot of Soul Charge engine throughout the game. So ideally, the point of the deck is to finish off with Soul Saver uh, as many times as possible. So, following up with that, we're going to be running four copies of a new card, uh, which is Swordsman of Explosive Flames Palamedes. So Palamedes' skill uh, seems to be very obviously in tangent with um, uh, Soul Saver Dragon. So his skill is when it's placed, you Soul Charge 1. So if you ride it or place it on Rearguard Circle, you Soul Charge 1. Um, and his other skill is uh, when a card is put into your drop zone from the soul, he gains 5k for each card. So, and it tells you in parentheses, if you drop, if you Soul Blast five cards, it gets 2,500. So, it even says five cards, so it's kind of like hinting, like, you know, like nudge, nudge, Soul Saver Dragon, plus 25k to that unit, plus the 15k, that's like plus 40k, you know, big numbers there. So, it's really good, it has a Force Marker as well, so if you have to write it before you write your Soul Saver Dragon, it's not too bad. You're already building up Soul before you get there. Next up... Uh, definitely need to be running this card. It's four copies of High Dog Breeder Akane. So Akane's skill is when it's placed, fan or rearguard circle, you kind of blast one, search your deck for Pongol and call it to rearguard circle, shuffle your deck, and Pongol gives you soul, so you want to run Akane to find Pongol. And then Akane's other skills, when it's boosted by a high beast, uh, it gets 3k. So uh, this is your main ride target for the deck. So you want to ride this called Pongol behind it, and then you have a 21k beater, and you get to Soul Charge 1. Uh, and then Pongol, of course, gaining 5k, it could be 26. So definitely 4 of Akane. So this next grade 2, I'm still a little iffy about, but I feel like it's a good choice. I'm running 4 copies of Rendering Angel, and my reason for running Rendering Angel is because we want run Dream Painter in the deck. So Rendering Angel's skill is when it's placed... Uh, you call a grade two or less from your hand to the rearguard circle, and if you call a unit, this gets 5k. So it's a simple power buff, 5k, kind of like Jaren. Um, you have to call a card to get the 5k, but it's like you can work around it. But Dream Painter's skill uh, requires you to call it from a card effect for you to get the skill off. So I wanted to incorporate grade twos or more cards that allow me to do that. And uh, it is a budget deck, and the Soul Saver deck, there's kind of not much going on to begin with. So the other grade two options would be K and Bedivere, but I did want to keep this deck kind of budget, so I decided to go with the Rendering Angel. So next up, I decided to put in three copies of Conjure of Mithril. So Conjure of Mithril's skill is when it's placed from your hand, you can blast one Soul Blast, search your deck for up to one grade two, and call it to Rear Guard Circle, then you shuffle your deck. So the reason I decided to run this is uh, multiple reasons. So if you don't have Rendering Angel, be a Dream Painter, you can call this from your hand, use its skill to call out a Rendering Angel, then use Rendering Angel to call out the Dream Painter, and then, you know, that way you can proc off the effect through Rendering Angel. You could also use this for, obviously, Akane. So basically, with one card and two Counter Blasts and Soul Blasts, you call Conjurer Mithril, to call it Akane, and then use Akane's skill to call it Pongo, and you get your soul back. So, that's one thing. You also soul charge a lot, so I'm not too worried about using the soul blast for cost. The deck also doesn't counter charge, or counter blast too much, because we don't have Alfreds or Blaster Blades, or, you know, those cards in the deck. Um, so, 
The deck is pretty counterblast lenient, um, so I do think Conjure of Mithril fits really well. So that was it for grade twos. For grade ones, I'm running four copies of Lucius. So a new card, Knight of Exemplary Sword, Lucius. So its skill is on the rearguard circle when your grade three or greater vanguard is placed on the vanguard circle. You put this into your soul from rear, draw a card, and you call a card from your hand to rear. So this card also helps proc off Dream Painter. That's one of the main reasons why I'm running it. But it also helps you fill up the soul. And it lets you draw a card, so kind of like getting you back the booster when you called it. So if you're going really early game, and you use a Kane, and then you also put down a grade. You know, you put down a grade one, or maybe you use Remedy Angel to call this card out. And then when you write your grade three, you move this into soul, draw a card, and then you can call another card. So it helps you draw cards, helps you proc off the effect of Dream Painter, so, and it helps you fill the soul. So the goal of the deck is to fill the soul as fast as you can. So I feel like this card definitely helps that. You should also maybe be able to do the Soul Blast 5. The, if your opponent's at grade two and you just rode to your Soul Saver, you may be able to do it that turn uh, and win. <laughs> before they can use like protect markers or stuff. Lastly for grade ones, um, sorry, not lastly. Next for grade ones is uh, Pongol. So when placed, if you have another unit in the same call as this unit, you soul charge into the soul charge card was a trigger, you get 5k. So you're obviously calling this out with the Kane. Uh, the skill also works if you don't call it with the Kane, so it's still cool. Uh, you soul charge, so getting soul early. And if you soul charge a trigger, it gets power. So there's a little bonus just in case you soul charge the trigger. You gotta run four Pongo if you're running four Kane, so. All right, now, lastly, for grade ones. Nope, still lying, there's still more grade ones. Four copies of Dream Painter. Uh, I explained Dream Painter earlier, but I'll say it's skill again. It's when it's placed by a card ability, um, you may put a grade two or less card from your drop zone into the bottom of your deck or into the soul. If you put it on the bottom of the deck, this unit gains 5k. So uh, usually you would want to put it into the soul, but circumstances where you want to put cards on the bottom of your deck will be such as uh, you want to put a Pongo back and then you use a Kane to call that Pongo back out in case you ran out of Pongos in the deck. Or if you just want to put a trigger at the bottom of your deck, you know, and you want to shuffle and then you got more triggers in your deck. So that's, and then the power, you know, you might want the power instead. All right, so that's Dream Painter. And lastly, we have two copies of Night Squire Allen. The deck doesn't counterblast a lot. You're only running two copies, so you're not gonna use it too often. It also does help proc off Dream Painter as well. So we do have a lot of ways to proc off this card. Um, so its ability is when it's placed, uh, you counterblast one, call up to one card with grade less than or equal to your Vanguard uh, to rear guard circle uh, from your hand. And if you do, you draw a card and this gets 3k. So you can call, like I said, you call Alan and then use its skill to call Dream Painter and then draw a card. And because you called Dream Painter through Alan, you get Dream Painter's effect off. Um, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. That's why I run Alan. So drawing cards is still nice. On to triggers. Uh, I'm still running four copies of the Flash Shield Esalt PG. It is because draw PGs, while they might be moderately expensive, maybe I'm thinking $5 maximum. If you find anything higher than $5, you're being ripped off, I'm sorry. Um, so these things go around for maybe three, three to five bucks. So that's pretty cheap for a necessary trading card. I would say these draw PGs are probably the most important things you can have in your standard deck. So before you get the rest of like your VRs or your triple Rs, I feel like if, as soon as you, if you're starting to play Vanguard and you get your first trial deck, the first thing you should go out and get before you get anything else is your draw perfect cards. I think those are the most important things you get first. So draw PGs, Sentinels. When you place it on the guard circle from your hand, you discard a card and uh, the unit that is being attacked cannot be hit until the end of battle. So and it's a draw trigger. So it makes more room for your grade one lineup. Next up, a uh, pretty normal trigger lineup. We're using the one that came in the trial deck. So we're doing four Epona and four Flogel. We're running a lot of crits just because uh, we do Soul Charge a lot. So we don't want to deck out um, from running more draw triggers. 
and crits also help you win games, and you're swinging for pretty high numbers anyway, so your opponent might say no guard, and then you get more crits, and then, you know, you start winning that way. And lastly, of course, your four heal triggers, because healing is good, and you want to survive in games. And of course, you know, your gift markers. Uh, your trial deck probably comes with three, so I'm just showing you the three that you get in your trial deck. So that is it for the budget standard deck focusing around Soul Saver Dragon. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you got any more questions or if you like want to see how the deck plays out, uh, let me know. And yeah, uh, if you guys have any more budget deck ideas that you want to see in the future for standard, uh, leave them in the comments. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Richard, and I'll see you all next time.